Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian number 31. This episode is my good friend, Melissa Thomas. Now, Melissa Thomas, you probably know as Melty Arts Online. She has quickly become one of my favorite people ever. Extremely talented, super nice, just all around awesome. You definitely need to follow her. Um, I found out about her because... uh, my other good friend, Savannah Kiefer of the Dorky Diva Show, had uh, some art commissioned by her, and she had pins made and stickers, and it just looks so cool. And Melissa and I met for the first time at a meetup uh, at Celebration, actually, and super hit it off. Uh, my best friend David and I commissioned a piece by her, and she drew David and I as Bays and Cheerit. Um I'm sure you can find that if you're listening to this. You've probably seen it before because it's all of my uh, avatars and profile pictures because I love it so much. But uh, this episode, we talk about uh, celebration. We had a lot of celebration stories. She has one of the best Dave Filoni stories I've heard, and it's amazing. And if you love Dave Filoni, you're going to love him even more after hearing this. Um, We talk about her art style, what influenced her to first become an artist, uh, we talk. We talk about waiting in line, the fortieth panel. Uh, we trade stories, and then uh, we get a little uh, into the details of her art. So, if I have any artist friends out there, she talks about how how she got started, different techniques, her developing her style. We even get into a little bit of her equipment because I know uh, I know a lot of people are wondering what exactly she uses and how she learned and all that good stuff. Uh, but this was super fun, and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. So. Without further ado, the interesting podcast, episode 31 with Melissa Thomas. Roll the theme song. I just did a podcast with a guy who's in Scotland. And yeah, I listened to it. It was really good. Oh, thanks. That was a... He was in Rogue One. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Kick-Ass 2. I know. How cool is that? That was amazing. And his... Okay, I have, like... I think accents are so cool. Right? So, like, listening to it, it was like... I'm getting a little bit jealous here. Like, <laughs> I kind of want, like, an accent. <laughs> Right, for real, and Scottish is like one of the coolest accents ever. Absolutely, it's it's really really cool. Um, but no, that was a great episode. I really enjoyed listening to that and just like breaking into acting. I mean, like yeah, God, that's just that's so awesome. And you you're trying to do something similar, aren't you? You were you were in a movie that was on Amazon. I saw you tweeted about it. Yeah, Tethered got picked up by Amazon. That's super cool. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Congrats. I know. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just one step closer to Star Wars. Yeah, no kidding. Any chance to be in Star Wars. Uh, I actually had a great conversation with one of my buddies. Uh, he's such a huge Star Wars dork. And Perfect. we were talking, and he goes, Melissa, like, if they have auditions, you know, for the next Star Wars movie, you and I should totally fly out together and do it. He's like, it would just be the perfect excuse to just say that we were in Star Wars, even though we weren't, like, a main character. So, like, right? we've been just talking about that, and I think it would be totally worth it. Oh, of course. I'm, like, a huge Aliens fan. Like, anything Aliens, I'm, yes. I'm for it. And I'm like, dude, put me, I don't even need to, you need, don't need to see my face. Just put a Sullustin mask on me, and I'm gold. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I just think it would be, like, really fun, because one of my favorite things about the Star Wars universe, especially in, like, the prequel trilogy, yeah. is the aliens. Right? It's just like, like, just like when Obi-Wan, like, walks into the bar in Attack of the Clones, and he's like, oh, I'm getting a drink, and they have, like, this vast majority of different aliens in the room, and it makes you just, like, want to look everywhere. Oh, yes. That's, that, episode six is my favorite of the original trilogy because of Jabba's Palace. Are you kidding me? 100%. Oh, my gosh, I love that movie. 100%. I adore Revenge, uh, Re- yeah, the, the, the Return of the Jedi. 
See, I always, the th that's why I always call it by numbers. <laughs> See, I can't work. Okay, so like my brain slows down when it works with numbers, but um, because I I just think like one, two, three, but I get that confused with like the first three. Right. It's like four, five, six, and then vice versa. Um, my personal favorite. I love. Yeah. Oh well, that's my all-time favorite movie of all time. Uh, three. Yes. Twins. I love. I love. 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 Revenge of the Sith. Um, that actually, I think that was the movie that really made me fall in love with it. Yeah. Like, kind of like the the be all end all. So like once I saw it, I was just like, I'm hooked. Like this is my jam. I love it. Sure. Um, interestingly enough, I, I meant to ask you, and when we were at celebration and stuff, uh, what's what got you into Star Wars? I was going to ask you the same question. <laughs> okay. so, uh, you go first. You okay. go first. Okay, what got me into Star Wars? Um, ooh, that's actually harder to answer. I'll say the first thing I ever saw of Star Wars, I was, I want to say five or so, and my cousin's boyfriend was a big Star Wars fan. He had figures all up and down the wall, and at five, like, I had no concept of what that was. But I remember he was watching episode five, and I walked into the living room and saw Yoda lift the X-Wing out of the swamp. Oh, and geez. my five-year-old brain was like, he's lifting something without touching it. How is this happening? And that that blew my mind. So I'd watch them uh, four, five, and six after that. And I liked them, but I didn't fully grasp them, I think, because I was so young. But mm -hmm. then when episode one came out, I saw that and just became obsessed and that's why I have such a deep love for one, and then Qui-Gon, and, you know, it feeds itself. Um, yeah, did so you go see episode one in theaters? I did. I actually re I remember the exact moment when Qui-Gon died, because I was eight, and I was not expecting it at all. And I, ha oh. I hadn't seen anything like that. You know, because I'd seen, like, uh, in all kinds of movies where people were dying and whatever, but it was never, like, a surprise. And, uh... Oh man, it was like when you when you get like ice water like dumped on you, <laughs> just like yeah. that, like a, like a shock. I remember being in the theater and I was like, oh, oh, oh no. Yeah, no, especially like being like a little kid and being like, this character is so cool. What? Yeah. Oh, I was not. Um, I still haven't recovered. <laughs> no, I I can't stand that death. In fact, the um, the thing is, my dad is so bitter about that movie because he loves Qui-Gon so much. Yes. He brought it up once. He was like, they took the most interesting character in that movie. He goes, besides, you know, like, Darth Maul, because right. Darth Maul's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's just, they cut his story short, and Dad was like, I can't believe that they would do this to such a iconic character that only had, like, a movie to get to know him, and yet he's, like, one of the most, like, iconic characters. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, Qui-Gon's great. Um, should should I go? <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. um, I never, interestingly enough, I never really had, like, like, a formal introduction to Star Wars. It was always kind of, like, there. Okay. You know, because my dad, when I was growing up, you know, he he won't admit this, but he is a total geek. Like, <laughs> um, Like, I grew up watching Star Trek. I grew up watching Star Wars. Like, I... Sure. Everything I know geeky is because of my dad. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's it's really, really great. And I have a lot to uh, thank because of him. Um, but basically what happened is, like, I, my, I guess you could say my oldest memory of Star Wars is I remember walking in on our family room and The Phantom Menace was on. And I remember it was the opening scene where Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are fighting all, like, the droids in the beginning and they're trying to negotiate. Oh, yeah. And I just, this is so embarrassing. Yes. I just remember thinking, who is that super young, attractive guy? There you go. <laughs> and I was just, and I'm like, I'm like five years old, six years old, and I'm like, he's really cute. And I just, like, that, that was like the first memory that ever stuck with me. And my dad's like, yeah, Melissa, that's, that's Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> Obi-Wan is old. That's not Obi-Wan. Dad's like, yeah, this is, this is young Obi-Wan. And I, I, I didn't believe him, but, uh, and in fact, I would get Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan mixed up when I was a little kid, but uh, my, my first experience was seeing Obi-Wan Kenobi, very young, attractive Obi-Wan Kenobi, sure. and being in disbelief that it was even him. That is like, awesome. Yeah, because like by the time we get to A New Hope, he's like this 
old guy that's like guarding Luke, and you're like, who is this old man? Right. You got a crazy <laughs> old space you... wizard. <laughs> yeah, that's the old space wizard. That was yeah, that was actually my my very first impression was he was some kind of wizard. Um, but yeah, no, I never I never really had any like this is Star Wars. Now we're gonna watch Star Wars. It was like always kind of there and. Uh, and then when the Clone Wars came out, that's where I really felt like I was able to make it my own, and uh, I really got reintroduced to the fandom. Really? Which I could just, yeah, the Clone Wars really, um, it really kind of expanded on that love for the universe, because by the time I had discovered Clone Wars, I think they were, like, in the middle of season four and about to start, or, like, or maybe near the end of season four and about to start five. Okay. Um, and I might have I might have been like a junior in high school, and <laughs> truthfully, it took me a little bit to warm up to it. I don't know if you were like a... oh man, I the first three seasons I was like oh god, and then season three hit, and I just I was in. So like, what was what was the moment where you were like, this is great versus like uh like it was so there were a couple episodes where i was like okay that was really good i remember the first episode where i was like wow i really like that was supply lines with uh master amagundai oh yeah <laughs> which i'm so upset that they named him that because i love the character and that is an on the nose name <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can't be like oh i really liked hit i really like this guy what's his name uh it's um i'm i'm a, i'm going to die <laughs> Um, I, I loved that episode because it showed like the real deal sacrifice of a Jedi. Um, yes. So that that was the first episode where I was like, whoa, okay, this this show has something. But then the, it didn't hit me, and Ahsoka really really annoyed me. Oh my gosh. Like a me lot. Too. I, I hated I, her. I I say I didn't hate her. I hated the existence of her. <laughs> Just, just like the fact that it's kind of like a group in high school where it's like, hey, these people are cool. And then it's like, why are you trying to join this? Yes, <laughs> yes. It was that. It was the nicknames of, of Artui and Sky oh. Guy. I was just like, that's Anakin Skywalker you're talking to. Sky Guy, you need to leave that. And then the the big thing that really I was like, why, why is this happening? Was in episode three... Anakin is not granted the rank of master. And I was like, you're telling me he wouldn't bring up the fact he had a Padawan for a couple years? I was like, Anakin having a Padawan makes no sense, and I wasn't for it. Um, little did I know. Uh, by the end of it, I'm like, oh my god, he did have a Padawan, and oh, he wouldn't bring it up. And <laughs> Yeah, no, I think, like, I'm going to draw back on what you just said, like, two seconds ago. Sure. r 2 uh, Too much. Rub me, it just rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. I, she's like, Hi, R2, and I'm like, oh, please stop. Yeah. Please. <laughs> like, it's it just like it made me cringe. Yeah, same. And then, and then Sky Guy really turned me off. I was like, oh, okay, I, you, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I felt like you don't have the right. It was kind yeah, of agreed. It felt like she was intruding. And then, so when, when I started the Clone Wars, mm -hmm. which I, I had seen an episode of season four, and I think. One of the first episodes I had seen was the uh, uh, Umbara arc. Oh, with the man. And that made me so emotional yeah. because, <laughs> oh, my gosh, like it was like a Saturday morning and the cartoons were on, you know, back when they still had that. Yeah. And um, that Umbara arc was on. And I think it was the one where I, I can't even like talk. I'll, I will start crying. Sure. I've got you're, a, you're among friends. <laughs> I'm among friends. It is free to cry. No. Yes. Um, but I saw the Umbara arc, and it just totally resonated with me. And I was like, this actually hurts, and I have no idea who this is. I remember, and I'm going to I'm gonna be vague only because I know David is going to listen to this. And oh, has he even not seen? Not yet. We have, Wait, a, we have a podcast together where we watch every episode of The Clone Wars and review it. Awesome. Because he's never seen it before. Wait, so should I not have said that? No, 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 that's fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, like, do you want me to put a filter on? No, no, this is perfect. I'm only going to say this because what I'm about to say, you'll, you'll understand. So, Krell oh. is, a, is a very interesting character. Mm -hmm. And I will say that I was basically live-tweeting the episode as I was watching it for the first time. Yeah. And I got so mad. Like, like I took it personally. Because I was like, this guy says he's a Jedi, but he's doing this and this and this. Oh, man, I just I just went off. Um, 
but the the arc ended up being okay, and that's what I'll say about that. But uh, <laughs> I'll yeah. I'll always remember the Umbara arc because I got so offended at Krell. And I was like, this guy calls himself a Jedi, but he's doing this, and he's a, he's awful, and uh, oh, it was rough. But Clone Wars yeah. gets so good. So good. It, does. it really does. And I think, um, so like I said, I started somewhere in season four. I had seen mm-hmm. five episodes, and I was like, I have to go back. Sure. Like, So I went back, and I watched all of them, and I think the thing that really got me hooked on Clone Wars and just Ahsoka in general Mm -hmm. was the fact that Ahsoka developed so well over the series just like as a character like she didn't stay the same and the scenarios that she went through were like perfectly perfectly realistic to somebody of that age sure you know like because like nope I mean like 14 year olds are gonna be obnoxious (laughs) like like, gonna be perfect human beings and like 18 year olds are gonna make mistakes um so it's just like I appreciated the development that they gave her and like like the morality issues that they talked about. Like the show just has like a lot of depth and I think because I had never seen anything like it before, it blew my mind and I just got hooked. Sure. So that makes just sense. Just a show. Yeah. No, it 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 didn't take me too long to get into it, but once I did, I was like binge watching every week. It's like <laughs> I was home from school, I couldn't wait to watch it. Uh, full blown obsession. It's so good, and like you said, Dave and I have hit on that before. That Ahsoka, we literally see her grow up, mm-hmm. you know, from the movie to Rebels. I mean, it's yeah. it's crazy to see this kind of time spent with a character to see them grow up, and she yeah. gets so cool by the end. And I mean, it's pretty hardcore. We just watched the episode. I think we're three episodes into season four now. And uh, oh, the gay. the end of season three with the Wookiee hunt, oh my and gosh, like that's... Padawans being hunted, and Ahsoka like showing leadership and bringing them together and getting them off, and like it's so cool. It's such a good show, and it's not a kid show at all. <laughs> that's the, the common misconception. Yes, and this is so interesting. So like I went with my sister to Star Wars Celebration, right? Right, and. While we were waiting in lines, like, I have made such good friends just waiting in lines. I love that. Yeah. And somebody would be like, uh, did you see that episode of the Clone Wars with Cad Bane, you know, fighting Obi-Wan? And I would be like, oh my gosh. And we would get into this really deep conversation. Sure. And my sister Carolyn is just standing there and she's like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, so sure. she would just like, stand there and I would have to back her up. So the cool thing is, is when we got back, she was like, okay, I need to catch up on this show because clearly everybody loves it. There was so much talk about it at Celebration sure. that she just dove into it. And she's been, you know, like texting me and like being like, wow, you're not kidding. Like Ahsoka really is annoying in season one, like things like that. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, she's been keeping up, but it's like, I'm so proud of the fact that she's like getting into it. Cause I'm like, yes, be sucked into my little fandom. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's how I don't know. I, I actually, I mean, I'm, obsessed is a is a almost what i am when it comes to star wars and um (laughs) dave and i have been friends for so long and he actually just recently got into star wars like within the last two or three years because just being around me all the time (laughs) because his his in was uh the video games he played rogue squadron a lot growing up and he loves flying and that's like his thing so he, he liked the games, but it was never more than just movies. Okay, cool. Well, when, the, when Disney bought Star Wars and they announced that they're getting rid of the EU and everything from here on out is going to be connected, David was like, oh, okay, so I can go in at the ground floor. And since then, we've read every canon book. Like, we're, we're super into it, and now he's, he's game time. So it's a, a fan by proxy uh, kind of same thing. That's really great, though. It's it's really fun, like, being able to kind of drag something. Sure. I, I really kind of like that because it's just fun to experience it with other people. Absolutely. You know, like, and that was, we can we can go off on a different tangent on Celebration later, but sure. just, like, generally as an example, Celebration was such a perfect example of that. It really, was that your first Celebration? It was my first Celebration. Really? Yes, and honestly, it could not have come soon enough just because it's been one of my lifelong dreams to attend a celebration since I was, like, 14 years old. 
Sure. And just like never having that opportunity and then suddenly having it, oh, it was a dream come true. It was good, right? Oh my gosh. It was the, it was the, I went to Celebration 6 and then I, it was great. It was different because it was before Disney bought it and the, I don't know, the crowd was just, it was different because there wasn't new Star Wars to look forward to at that time. You know, it was was it? This was in 2012. Oh yeah. Oh, that was right before Disney bought them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so there was no like we didn't know the new movies were coming out or anything. I think season season five was about to premiere of the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was different, but now it's like this celebration for me. I made way more friends, and I got to go all to the panels and like I spent the night online and like I didn't do any of that stuff at the last celebration. I uh, was I was following um so like before we met and everything I was actually I was following your story on Instagram. Oh yeah. <laughs> you you made a post and you were like in line for 40 years of Star Wars or something. It was like the first day and it was like 2 in the afternoon I think. Yep, it was. <laughs> and I I looked at my sister and I was like Carolyn, we need to like be on top of these things because if he's in line at two before the next day yeah we were just talking we're like oh my gosh what did we miss but uh no i actually uh i referenced a lot of like what you were doing so i didn't screw up that is awesome you know it's so very I was dangerous just, i was following like your story uh savannah Kiefer's story she's the best um, she rocks and i have i have more good things to say about her but oh yeah um, actually while we're on the topic uh, to prepare for Star Wars Celebration, I listened to the Dorky Diva episode where you and her were talking about, like, things to bring. Oh, yeah. And, like, be prepared. And I listened to that, like, two or three times because I'm a perfectionist. Sure. And I have, like, a notebook of, like, all these notes, like, uh, bring poster tubes, uh, water bottles, um, and, like, in all caps I wrote, being in line is great because you make best friends. <laughs> <laughs> like overly paranoid notes so yeah. like thank you for that that was really helpful of course um, she does the same thing she's she had like a planner like with everything and then a chart did she really <laughs> yeah savannah's savannah's also very thorough yeah i took a piece of paper and i wrote down all the panels i wanted to go to and what time they were and then i highlighted them in different colors sure because I'm like, if this is my first celebration, I'm not missing any of this. I, I did the exact same. I had a notebook where I was like, all right, these are the days that these panels are happening. Here's how we have to do this. And we had an itinerary, which you kind of have to with celebration. I mean, there's so much going on, you know. Well, and it was so huge this year. Like, there were so many people there. It was unbelievable. Like, I, I mean, I expect... I'm, like it's Star Wars everybody's gonna like who doesn't love Star Wars yeah like, for real 90% of the nation just like is obsessed with it so it's not like I wasn't expecting people but like seeing that many people was kind of like oh wow yeah like, it's it's, it's, it's hard to comprehend thousands of people spending the night on concrete <laughs> how how was that by the way you got into the yeah you did because I you, did you saw John Williams and cried I did <laughs> oh man I was crying all over that panel <laughs> So, uh, actually, tell me about that, because, like, I didn't get that opportunity, so... the So that was the 40th panel. It was the one that I knew I wanted to go to, because yeah. there was the 40th, and then there was the Episode 8 panel. And I was like, the Episode 8 panel is going to be amazing. We know we're going to get some kind of trailer, but mm -hmm. there's going to be an Episode 9 panel in the future. So it's not like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And I was yeah. like, I need to be in the 40th panel. And then I'd heard from unnamed inside sources that Harrison Ford was going to be there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, I definitely made the right choice. And um, we got in line at 2 o'clock on Wednesday for the panel that starts 11 in the morning on Thursday. And wow. the the line, because we got in so early, I mean, we were like, I think, 150th in line. So we were, we were pretty close, which was cool. Yeah, um, and the waiting in line was fine. Uh, once we got in, it was cool. We got those... Um, like air couches. Oh, that, smart. So yeah, so David and I had those. So that was really smart. I highly recommend those for anyone staying in line. Um, the the downside was at 
let's say one o'clock in the morning, I would say, like one or two, maybe two in the morning, uh, DJ Elliot came out and oh. started an impromptu dance party. Are you serious? Yes, which is, I was not happy um, <laughs> because it, I understand, like, it's super cool for those guys to make sure everyone's having a good time. Like, that's really yeah. neat. But the problem is, the doors closed hours before, and it's at the point where everyone was just falling asleep. Mm -hmm. So you're, like, three minutes from the sunken place. And then the, yeah. the, the dance party lasted 30 minutes, which, fun fact, is how long it takes to go from almost asleep to wide awake again. Yep. And, uh... So by the time 5 o'clock rolled around when we got our wristbands, everyone's, like, really cranky and everything. And they got super disorganized when they started passing out the wristbands because you got your wristbands, and then they didn't know where to line up again. So it was just this crowd of people, and they're like, we don't know what to do, and some people lost their spots in line and whatever. But by and large, uh, it was great. We got into the front, um, and we, we, we pushed through. <laughs> and... We ended up in the fifth row, right in front of John Williams. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. Dead serious. And I'm so jealous. I knew Harrison Ford was going. I did not know John Williams was going to be there. And so this, this panel, it starts with this beautiful video of like what Star Wars means, and I'm crying. And then they bring out George Lucas, and I was like, he has to be here. And George Lucas is like, he's, he's my guy. You know, like, I owe this man everything. And I, you never see him talk long form. You know, it's always five minutes here, five minutes there. At Celebration 6, he surprised a couple people uh, at a panel. And he was only there for, like, 10 or 15 minutes, and then he would leave. So to hear him talk at length was great. And then we had, like, 10 different guests. Hayden Christensen, Ian McDiarmid, you know, ev everyone was there. Then Harrison Ford comes out. And being on the inside knowing it was coming, I just kind of, like, watched and, like, rubbed my hands together looking at everybody. <laughs> and it went it went bonkers. And so Harrison comes out, and he's talking about Star Wars, which is an anomaly of itself. And then Billy Lord comes out and does this great tribute to Carrie, and I'm crying. And then they do this tribute video to Carrie Fisher, and I'm crying harder. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then... I'm looking to my left at the stage where the tribute video just happened. And then to my right, I notice something moving and the curtains open up and I'm looking and I was like, what is that? And it's John Williams. And uh -huh. I lost it. Like screaming, like I made noises. People shouldn't. It was, it was one of that panel, the 40th panel at Celebration Orlando was one of the greatest experiences of my entire life. So whoever orchestrated that, I owe them a lot. Wow. I'm actually, like, I'm I'm really jealous because while you were enjoying your happy crying <laughs> class, um, I was in the room next door waiting for the Dave Filoni panel. Ah, uh, but the Dave you know, Filoni panel is pretty so, good. Yeah, so uh, I was in that room waiting because I know that you guys were in there first before they, like, took you into the main room. Yeah. Like, I'm just sitting in that waiting room, and I'm talking to... My sister and Joan Marie of the Wookiee Gunner. She's great. Also, she's fabulous. Love her. Um, I was talking to them, and we just hear this music. It's Princess Leia's theme. And I look over at my sister, and I'm like, oh, that's lovely. Like, they're doing a tribute to Carrie Fisher. That's so nice. And <laughs> it gets louder, and everybody's looking at each other. And then somebody shouts from across the room, John Williams is in the building! Oh my god. The room like turns around and looks at each other and we're like, no, 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 no. So we can all hear this music next door and I'm getting emotional, but I'm like, why do I have to be sitting here? <laughs> oh yeah, you're like so close. I can hear it through the walls. Yeah, so it was like the music was loud. We could hear it like Imperial March, Leia yeah. theme, and I was like, John, John Williams, John freaking Williams is in the room next door. Yeah. And ugh, just chills, like knowing that gave me chills. Sure. It's, ugh. oh, it was bonkers. This was, the Dave Filoni panel, was that the one with him and Pablo? Yes, that was. Ooh. And I'm a big was Pablo fan. 
Yeah, yeah I know. I know you are. Uh, we're going to have to talk about that, too. Um, yeah. Oh, we're talking about everything here. <laughs> yes. All, like, if you if you get me talking about Star Wars, man, I'm going to, like, Same. talk about this all day. Same. Yeah, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard not to. I love it so much. But, no, I loved uh, the animated Origins panel. Um, that was a really well-orchestrated panel because, like, so many people just love the Clone Wars and so many of the characters that they talked about sure. were Clone Wars. Um, the thing that got me... Wait, can I, can I say things? Or is oh, yeah. David go- <laughs> okay, okay, I can say things. Okay. Just saying. Hello. Yeah, spoiler alert. David, we know you're listening, so... Yeah, yeah David, sorry, I'm earmuffs. not trying to... Cheers. <laughs> Um, the thing that got me is when they showed the concept art of Rex. Yes. I actually burst into tears. That deal. Because the one character I'm frequently scared they're going to kill is Rex. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, like, he, he was brushing death all the time in the Clone Wars, but now in Rebels, it's like, hey guys, anybody can die. Yeah, for real. So, like, seeing that concept art of him in the Endor outfit, I I just went hysterical, and my sister had no idea what was going on, and I was like, it's Rex, it's Rex, oh my gosh, it's Rex, and just, like, having the audience, like, scream with me, yeah, it was just, like, so invigorating, and it just made me feel so alive, but, oh, hands down, that was, like, my favorite moment of the panel, and, um, the Cad Bane and Boba, yes, uh, I saw the footage of that, and I freaked. It was so hard not to just, like, screech, like, yeah. at the top. Um, mainly because if I had to pick a favorite from the Clone Wars, like, who's not a main, it would definitely be Cad Bane. Oh, for sure. He's the greatest bounty hunter of all time. He's, like, he's Clint Eastwood in Star Wars. Right? I always say yes. that Cad Bane, Cad Bane is what people think Boba Fett is. Exactly, exactly. See, like, and I never got the hype around Boba Fett just because, Me like, doesn't, like, you look cool, but you just stand there. Yeah, you don't like, do nothing. You you literally just stand there, and you die in the most pathetic way. Like, yeah, it's true. Jetpack malfunction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't get that. So I feel like Cad Bane is exactly what everybody thinks Boba Fett is. Yeah. That is the greatest way to put it. Um, That's what I'm saying. But, but no, like, seeing two of these really great characters face it off with each other. Yeah, and the blast mark, the famous blast mark on Boba's helmet was from Cad Bane. And I, I love that George Lucas was the one who came up with that idea. He did? Yeah. Yeah, oh my God, Dave, awesome. Dave said in an interview, he's like, George was like, we're going to have this happen, and then put it right there, and point it to the helmet. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, that's the one thing, too, that I love, is the fact that, like, George Lucas just put so much creative, like, perspective into that show like it just yeah. wasn't like he was working on it it's exactly that clone wars is the last thing that george lucas has his fingerprints on of star wars yeah so it's it's gold yeah it's 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 perfect let's just like wait it's perfect but yeah i really i really like that uh panel and actually i ran into pablo hidalgo on the way out like after that panel oh and it was it was actually like completely unintentional like i hit him accidentally but i don't <laughs> You noticed, like, because he was just walking out, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, you're Pablo Hidalgo," and he's like, "Yes." And I was like, I need a "Picture with you," and he's like, "Okay." Oh, it's so cool. It, it was great. He was really nice. So I have a picture with Pablo, and that was like my first oh, wow moment of celebration. So I kind of went, I went crazy. Um, but no, you met Pablo too, didn't you? I did. Um, as I know that was like your goal. It, yes, because. Anyone who's talked to me for more than five minutes knows I'm a big Pablo Hidalgo fan. I just think he's such a cool dude. And on Recon, yes. the running gag with the coffee is hilarious. Oh, um, I, oh, somebody gave him a bag of coffee beans as a joke. Oh, that's amazing. That I is think it, amazing. I want to say, who was it? I think it might have been Robo Emma, who does the Sabine cosplay. Yes. I think it was her. I'm pretty sure it was her. If, if I get that wrong, I'm sorry to whoever is listening, yeah. but I'm pretty sure it was her, and I heard that he thought it was hilarious. <laughs> yes, he just, he's so, he's so funny, and yeah. he just seems like the coolest dude, so I want to be friends with him, and <laughs> I met him, and I, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed under the circumstances, because he was very, very busy, like, he was clearly late, had to go somewhere, and I didn't see him right away, but David did. So I was just walking, and I feel this. I feel my backpack stop moving, and I keep moving. And I was like, oh, what's happening? And David's like, look. And then Pablo just walked right by us. 
and somebody ran up to him and was like, oh, hey, cool, can I get a picture with you? And he's like, yeah, really quick, and he was really nice. So I just went up to him, I was like, hey, it's great to meet you, I love what you do, thanks for everything. And he's like, cool, uh, I gotta go. So it was really quick, really brief, he was super nice, but one day I'm gonna get a picture with him. Because that's another thing that I'm like, I'm really bad at pictures, because I just don't think about it, because I'm so, like, obsessed with, like, living in the moment, that I'm like, yes. I need to experience this. And uh, I just forget to take pictures. Uh, yeah. But he's great. He's super great. I, I adore the story group, and I like can't put into words how much I appreciate them. Uh, but they're they're super cool. So you, I, I want yeah. this. I want this on the record. You okay. met Dave Filoni. I did. And I want I want to hear this whole story again because I love it. Okay. Yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> God, if I talk about it, I'm just gonna get so emotional because it was so important. So. Uh, backstory time, I told you and Savannah and everybody else there that, like, my dream in high school mm-hmm. was to be Dave Filoni's Padawan. Like, yes. if he is George Lucas's Padawan, I wanted to learn from Dave Filoni. Like, yes. everything. Because he's just, he's such a brilliant storyteller, and he really understands the Star Wars universe and, like, how everything should be, and I've just always, like, really respected that. Yeah. And he doesn't necessarily, like, do things because he knows it's fan service, but because he knows it's realistic and it would actually be what happened. Right. So, like, just hands down, like, just a lot of respect for that guy. So, uh, getting to Celebration, I, or I'm not getting to Celebration, maybe, like, two months prior, I was like, I gotta draw something for this guy. Sure. Just to, like, express, like, how much everything that he does means to me. And you saw it, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. I post yeah, I post duh, I posted on Twitter. It's beautiful. But thank you. Um but it basically was like a drawing of him and all the pic- all, everything pictured had something to do with him. Right. So I I got an eleven by seventeen print, you know, I was really excited, I'm gonna give this to Dave. And then I got to celebration and I was like, I am not the only person that wants to see this guy <laughs> Which is like, Oh my gosh, am I gonna be able to meet this guy? And so when I went to, you know, like Savannah's Dorky Diva meetup, and that's where I met you, um, yep. I was telling everybody, and everybody was like, you want to catch Dave at the Ahsoka Lives event. Like, that is his baby, it's his character, um, that's your best shot to catch him. So I was like, okay, okay, let's, let's go, let's do this. So Saturday, I think I went to immediately, like, focus mode. Mm-hmm. So I, I went to Ahsoka Lives Day, you know, Ashley comes down the escalator, everybody's screaming, um... You know, give it 20 minutes later, and Dave comes down the escalator, and my heart is just going crazy. Like, I'm pretty sure I went to unhealthy levels of, like, blood pressure. Sure. <laughs> it was really bad. Like, I was so nervous. So, Dave comes down the escalator. He heads over. He's with Ashley. When, like, 30 minutes goes by, and I just see him start to leave. And I was like, okay. So, I ran over to the escalator on the stairs, and these four boys got in front of me. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. And then in front of them was, like, this guard. And then in front of the, him was Dave and these two women that were leading him away. Right. Because he had press conference. So I'm, I'm on the escalator. You know, we go up the escalator. And I start running once we hit the top. Sure. And these, <laughs> all these guys are going, Mr. Filoni, Mr. Filoni. And they're, like, yelling his name. And I just, like, cut my hands together. And I went, Dave! Like, really loudly. Yes. He turns around, and I was like, oh, yes, yes. So I ran up to him, and I was like, I am so sorry. I know you have a press conference. I know you're busy. But if I don't give this to you, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. Yes. And he looked at me, and he started laughing. And he goes, you look amazing. Like, because I was dressed as Dave. Yes. Because I was like, yes, dressed as Dave. I had the wolf shirt. I had the cowboy hat. And he was like, you look so awesome. And I was like, thank you. And then he goes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It means a lot, all your support. And he gave it to the lady standing next to him, and he turned to leave, and he goes, no, no, wait, come here. And he gave me a hug. Yes. And I, like, started shaking. Like, and it wasn't it wasn't one of those, like, oh, here's a hug and bye. It was like, here's a real authentic hug. Yeah. And I, I just went hysterical because it's one thing to admire somebody from a TV screen. It's another thing when they're hugging you and thanking you yeah. and acknowledging you in person and they don't have to. When you have a genuine moment. So, like, I'm shaking and he's like, 
okay, I gotta go, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And then the ladies, like, led him away, and I was just standing there, like, crying. <laughs> Honestly, I could not have asked for a better moment at Celebration. Like, that was the highlight because I got to meet one of my biggest inspirations, and it was only for, like, 30 seconds, but it meant so much to me. Plus, I had been up since, like, 1 in the morning waiting for the season 4 panel, so it was probably just a lot of tired emotions, too. Right. But... <laughs> It was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. But I hope I didn't rush that story. I mean, like, that's, like, the more condensed yeah, version. Yeah, no, it, that is great. It's my favorite story I heard from Celebration. Oh, it's, well, it's so good because we love Dave. He's great. Mm-hmm. And the fact that – it's like I told you. You know, the fact that he acknowledged you, got your art, and was like, oh, that's really great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Turned away and then stopped – and turned back like that that there speaks so much to who dave is as a person and i'm just so glad people like him are at the forefront of star wars exactly like i think what took me off guard is how nice he was yeah like like and you talking about pablo is the fact that you you kind of don't expect that right you know it's just kind of like like oh i just want to give this to you but you don't it's not that you wouldn't expect it, it's just like you don't expect anything back, you know? Exactly. And just having him, like, turn around, acknowledge me, something he didn't have to do, and then leave, like, just touched me so much. Just, like, as a person, like, I was just like, wow, that was really unbelievably nice. Like, yeah. And I just, like, I think that's the great thing about Star Wars. It's just, like, we are super lucky to have people like that at the forefront. For real. Especially because, like, having done, I mean... A, a, a bit of acting and been on some big sets a lot of people are dicks yeah. and it's just awful and it's a whole lot of peacocking like mm-hmm. people blow themselves up to be bigger than they are and then it's a hierarchy kind of garbage like a great great example did you see this week's Star Wars show I did not okay well Janina's in it and she's okay. uh, uh, Aiden Versio from the new Battlefront she's the woman special forces pilot yeah yeah she, I know her from a lot of stuff. She's done, uh, I know her from True Blood. I watched True Blood and she was in it. And she's a great actress. But she talks about, um, in the interview, she actually like starts crying when she talks about getting the role in the game and being a part of Star Wars. And how in Hollywood, you have to pretend you don't care and you got to be cool and you can't really feel anything. But Star Wars is different. And Star Wars, you can really get into it and have a real moment and i love that disney owns star wars now they're making you know blockbuster movies and shows and it's it's on the level of hollywood but it has the authenticity that hollywood doesn't and it's just great yeah 100 percent agree it's and there's this weird kind of emotion connected with star wars and i don't think it's like something that you can put into words but there's such a deep emotional feeling tied with it like when you watch the movies you feel it and it's authentic but you can't exactly pinpoint what it is it's magic you know and it's it's something like as simple as like when i was in high school i couldn't hum the force theme without crying sure i can't watch episode three without crying and i've seen it well over a hundred (laughs) times well it's just like and and you feel for these characters and just like and the people who create them like it's there's such an authentic feeling tied in with Star Wars that I think that's what holds people onto it. It's what made the movie separate from every other franchise that's out there. I agree. It's because usually, like when we go into a movie, we we go into the movie to experience the world, escape reality, and then when the movie's over, we come back to reality. But Star Wars misbehaved, and it was like you want to stay here. <laughs> sure. I always talk you know, about how Star Wars. Because there are two types of people. There are people who see Star Wars as movies, and there are people who see there's so much more. You know, and Star Wars is, is a universe that's so big and so expansive that there's room for everyone, and there is a place, and there's so many stories, and it's all one story, and there's nothing like it. Yeah. It's the best thing in the world, and I can talk at length. Uh, <laughs> but so you drew a great piece for Dave. You yeah, drew a great piece for Ashley. Yeah, do you, uh, should I explain that? Absolutely, because it's great. And she saw oh. it. 
Yes, okay. And this is where I'm going to like praise Savannah Keeper because she is actually the greatest. She is the best ever. Yeah, she's quite a phenomenal human being. But um, basically, I was at Ahsoka Lives Day, you know, how I caught Dave, and I had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Which was, are you going to catch Dave or are you going to catch Ashley? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's like picking between like two of my favorite like characters. Like, right. you know, I can't, I can't do that. And I, I had worked so hard on this piece for Dave that I was like, I, I can't, like, I can't miss out on this. I will be very upset if I don't give it to him. Right. So I went up to Savannah, who was kind of just like handling everything for Ashley. Yep. She's a, a bomb. Yeah. Um, so I went up to Savannah and I was like, um, I, like, I just caught Dave, but I need to run because my sister and I have other plans. Can you make sure that Ashley gets this drawing? And I gave it to Savannah and Savannah was like, yeah, she's like, absolutely. Don't worry about it. I will make sure she gets a hundred percent. So I'm like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And that was that. So by the time that celebration had ended, it was like not quite a week later. I posted the drawing on Instagram and I just made a post and I tagged Ashley and I was like, so I didn't get to give this drawing to Ashley, but I really truly appreciate everything you do. I love her universe. I love what you do for like the fan community. Just thank you so much. And Savannah commented and she was like, I made sure she got this. And I was like, oh yay, like great. And I wasn't really expecting anything else. So I go to bed. And I wake up the next morning, and there is this long comment on Instagram from Ashley. And she's like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is beautiful. Like, I can't believe you drew it. Like, I can't tell you how much this means to me. Just, like, this slew of, like, really kind things. And I just started crying, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Thank you, Savannah. Thank you, Ashley. Just, like, I was just so grateful sure. that you were able to see it. And I cannot thank savannah enough like that meant so much to me so even though i didn't get to meet her which is kind of a bummer because ashley's yes. also very big inspiration i'm so glad she got it sure like just because it's kind of like my way like i'm sorry i couldn't meet you but thank you so much for everything that you do sure ashley's great ashley super is super nice i'm jealous you got to meet her man i i saw your picture i was like ah oh, the perks of being <laughs> Like, you know, I just... It, uh, it's, it's more like, the perks of being friends with Savannah. That, oh, yeah, that, that is true, because now, now she's working for her, which is kind of incredible. And that's, how, that's exactly how that happened, because I was in line, and Savannah texted me, and she's like, hey, um, Ashley's going to be there in like 10 minutes, so just be ready. I was like, oh, sweet. And then Savannah pulled me out of line and introduced me to Ashley. Oh, that's so nice. So it's all... No, she's... I'm riding her coattails into Star Wars. She's the best. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll just talk all day about Savannah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Savannah is... She's great because... We met she, like, through her. Me. Yeah, we did meet through her. It was um, it was the meetup we met. Yeah, so thank you, Savannah. That, thank you so much. Um, yeah, no, her, uh, her dorky diva meetup was great. It was very, very significant for me. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, talk about that, actually. It, so, Savannah always said that the best part about Star Wars for her was the mutual fans, right? And yeah. I never really got that. Because growing up, I adore the prequels. I love the old show. I love all of it, you know? Me too. And the people I grew up with didn't like the prequels. And the majority of people that I talked to hated Episode One. And I love Jar Jar, and Qui-Gon's my all-time favorite Star Wars character. I love Episode One, um, So it was hard because I'm like, the fans of Star Wars aren't really fans of Star Wars, you know? So I never had that uh, experience. And then I remember when we did the... When we talked about the episode of Twin Sons of Rebels. Oh, yeah. I listened to that. And it was very interesting. I was so nervous when she released that. Because Savannah is super professional. She's great. Like, I can't say enough good things about her. And when she asked me to be a co-host on her show, I was like, are you sure you want to do this? Because I, I get hyped. I was, like, I was like, I like Star Wars. And sometimes when I get into it, I get into it. I love the details. And so yes. she's like, you want to talk about Twin Sons? I was like, yes, please. 
And if you go back and listen to it, I'm like, and it was crazy. And then you see like Ben gets up and then it's a close up of his eyes. And then you see blue light and you're like, oh, snap, it's game time. And the Darth Maul's there and you're like, and I'm like, it's Akira Kurosawa all over the place. And it's like Seven Samurai and this. And then uh, he does the move with Qui-Gon and I, I just got really hyped. And when she released it, I was like, oh, no, this is where I'm going to lose all of her all of her fan base because they come for Savannah and they're just getting this dude freaking out about Rebels. And people were super nice. I got I got quite a few Twitter followers from it. So I was like, whoa, this is weird. And then when the meetup happened, I was like, okay, you know, it's Savannah's thing. I'm, I'm attached to her, so it'll be cool, and I'll just hang out and whatever. And everyone was so nice. Like, so many people were like, I love what you bring to the show. Uh, you talk about things that I want to hear about. And I'm like, I've never had this acceptance before. <laughs> and, and I walked away, like, real emotional. Yeah, no, I think you and Savannah have a really great dynamic on that show because it's two, like, very different approaches. Right. Like, and I think that's what makes the show work so well is, like, on one hand, I agreed with a lot of Savannah's points on Twin Suns, but on the other hand, I also agreed with a lot of what you said. Yeah. So it was, like, it just creates a lot of interest. And also, on a side note, I do think the dorky dude should be a thing that should happen. For real. So <laughs> all the time, I tell her all the time. She's the dorky diva, so I can be the dorky dude. Yeah, I think that'd be. I think that'd be very, very cool. But uh, going back to like what you said, like how nice and accepting everybody is. Sure. Like just getting in there, and I met so many people. Like just at her meetup alone. Yeah. That would be, and they they knew who I was. Sure. And I, oh my gosh seriously and we just like would immediately hit it off it, like and then be best friends within five minutes and i'm like i did not think that this was possible but it is and it's crazy and i love it and the community is just amazing it really really is speaking of amazing your art oh <laughs> your art you. is so good and so different and it's so so i i, I don't know a whole lot about art david does and what I've what I've learned is it's very difficult to come up with a particular style, because some people just copy. You know, they get art and they can recreate it perfectly, and it's great. But other people, like I can look at a piece and know it's you, which is super cool. I'm like, oh snap! So I mean, I knew we had to we had to commission a piece from you, seeing what you did with Savannah. Um, oh, but thank you so much. When did you start drawing? When did I start drawing? Good, Good question. question. Um. For as long as I could remember, I mean, since I could start drawing. I mean, there wasn't a time where, like, I haven't been. Um, but the passion really started to pick up back in 2004 because that was the year The Incredibles came out. Oh, sweet. And that movie blew my mind. It's so like, good. I ran out of that theater screaming to my mom, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Really? And I, Yeah, and I just, I knew I was... At 10 maybe I think I was 10 years old mm -hmm. and I got home and I, uh, I ran up to my dad and I was like I want to be an artist I want to do cartoons and my dad looks at me and he goes do you make money for that <laughs> <laughs> and I was like yes but no like I, I've been drawing for a while and um, you you know this better than anybody I draw a lot of Star Wars yes. um, I feel such a connection to that fandom so I really feel like it gives my imagination a really crazy place to go to, and I of course. love it. I, I can't not draw. It's like denying a part of my soul. Right, right. And it's it's literally, I mean, like you said, inspiration. That's what Star Wars is. And there's so much that you can do with it, and you do it very, very well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. How, how did you learn to draw? Did you just sort of figure it out? Did you take classes? or? I, uh, I taught myself. What? For the most part. Yes. I was um, not expecting that answer at all. Uh... Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, it's a bit of a funny story. In high school, you know, I would always take, like, you know, like, oh, like, summer art courses, like, you know, like, summer art camps. Sure. But that can be anything from, like, tie-dye shirts to printmaking, so none of it was really in the category that I wanted to do. Right. So, honestly, it's, like, 7 to 12 hours every day of just working super hard and trying to develop my style and you know it's it's always constantly evolving but sure for the most part I did teach myself and it's still a journey I'm, I'm still learning you know wow 
<laughs> that is incredible. It's funny, and I, I bring David up all the time because he's my best friend. And yeah, no David is teaching himself animation right now. And Good for him. that's how he's doing it, just hours of work and just hitting it and to see that you taught yourself and you put out this kind of work. That is incredible. And you and I've seen you like draw because you've done digital stuff. You've done like pen and paper, and that is amazing. Like I was already in awe, but now even more so. Wow. I really appreciate that. Um, and I think I think the funniest thing ever is the most overplayed advice for any art form is don't stop drawing. You know, don't like put like six hours into it. It literally like the most overstated advice ever for an artist is draw all the time sure but it is the most true sure just because it's like you know i'll see a drawing i did like two weeks ago and i'm like e like i do not like the way i drew that <laughs> and then it's like you get like three weeks later and you're like how did i make this jump from that to that sure you know? and it's 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 cool it's an experience i i do love it a lot and i really appreciate what you just said that means a lot to me it's true that is it. I'm wow, wow. I had no idea. I thought I was like, oh, you know, I took uh, this many years of this studies and did this. this. You're like, no, nah, I just kept drawing. That's when. That's when you know, like, that it's meant to be. When you have the the talent, you know, just natural, it comes out, and it it's so good. I absolutely love your style. I, I really appreciate that a lot, and just like, and thank you for commissioning me. Uh, like, thank you uh, for the op the the option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I really, I got a kick out of doing that. I really do. I do love making art for people. It really gives me a lot of joy to do that. So. And it's. I can't recommend it enough. I immediately changed like all my profile pictures. <laughs> that made me really happy. I'm so glad you like it. I was like, it's perfect. When you sent it over, I was like, David. <laughs> you're, you're you're texting me. You're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It's but, uh, so good. Do you do you have a preferred medium? Do I have a preferred medium? Because um, you do it all. I do. Um, I, I need to get back. I do love watercolor. I, I'm trying to get back into that if I can just get more time. I, I do like the digital art just because, you know, there's just so much there at my fingertips. Sure. And I can't learn it quick enough. So it's just every opportunity to learn like a new tool in Photoshop is just like, it's mind blowing. I get so excited over new techniques or things I can learn. Sure. What, so I really enjoy that a lot. What, uh, what programs and equipment do you use? I use uh, Photoshop 2017, Adobe Illustrator 2017, and Paint Tool Sci, which is like my best friend. Sweet. Um, which is kind of like the easier version of Photoshop, so I just really like it a lot. Right. Uh, but yeah, no, I, it's great. Art's, art is literally the best thing. <laughs> sure. Do you use a tablet? I do. I use a Wacom Intuos 5. I Sweet. think that's. I hope I. I hope I got that right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I. I'm really bad with technology. Sure. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. And you like it? I love it. Is it one of those ones where you like have to look at the screen and then your hands drawing on the tablet, or is the tablet a screen as well? Um. It's. It's the first one. It's where you're drawing the tablet and it appears on the screen, which is actually that took me about like two or three years to learn to do well. Sure. Just because, like, it's you're like you're not drawing on a piece of paper. You have to learn that hand to eye coordination, and that can be really hard. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Uh, but I'm trying to transition into a uh, a Cintiq, which is the draw on screen one. Right. Because you know that's the industry standard. And sure. I I do need to learn that, but. Did you uh, did you start with digital art, or you started like pen and paper? I started pen and paper because I'm a firm believer in. Basically. Knowing how to draw traditionally so it can translate into digital. Oh, genius. So it's kind of like, you know, if your traditional art is strong, you know, sure. transitioning into that digital will be much easier because you'll understand, like, basic things like shape and form and, you know, line art and just, like, basically hand steadiness. Right. And then translating that into the tablet form, uh, it's still tricky, but your foundations will be stronger. Right. That makes sense. So it's just like it's a lot of like shapes and understanding how like perspective works and things like that. Sure. See now that's that's the technical stuff. <laughs> I, no, I love it. I love stuff like that. I'm all about the technicals. Because that's the thing is like if anyone's listening that is 
trying to get into art and wants to learn new things. Like I know David's going to dissect this section. <laughs> um, yeah, he's gonna like it, things you have to take notes. Sure. <laughs> and like it, it really helps. Um, but your style, how did you develop that? How did I develop my style? Um, it's a hard well, question. It's a hard question because I feel like style is always changing. Sure. Right? So, I mean, like, when I was younger, I would look at a style and I would do my best to mimic that style. Sure. And just, like, being able to learn it. And I feel with every different style that you draw, you learn something new from that style and you apply it to your own, whether you know it or not. Okay. So it's kind of like, it's not necessarily copying, but it's kind of adding adding to your library in your mind. Right. So it's kind of like, oh, I like the way this person draws hands, you know, and it goes into your, your mind library. So the next time you draw a specific hand pose, you're like, this is how I remember this person did it. And then it kind of starts turning into your own. Sure. So you start adding, I, I don't know if, I don't even know if I've settled in a particular style. I think I'm just consistently finding it. You yeah, know, like, absolutely. It's, it's constantly evolving. I think there's always going to be that thing that's like, oh, that's that's Melty's work, but I think it's consistently going to evolve and it will get stronger the more I work on it. Sure, and now you're doing chibis, which is awesome. Yeah, I thought I thought that would be a new kind of fun experiment to get into because you got to keep it, like, fresh and exciting, right. you know? Like with your art, like if you're constantly doing the same thing every day, it gets a little boring. Right. So, and I think teaching myself a different kind of way of drawing is adding to that mind library. So. Sure. Yeah. And how do you, uh, how do you go about tackling a piece? Like we'll use we'll use the me and David as Chirrut and Bays as a as an example. What how how do you do that? What do you start? What's your process? Wow, you you are asking some really good questions. <laughs> I, I'm a, I like to learn things. Okay, um, so interestingly enough, I start with who I'm drawing. Okay. And I try to think. So if it's somebody I've never drawn before, so in your case, like I've never drawn you before, so right. I'll look at the photograph or the image of the character, and I'll be like, what are the features that make this person stand out? And then I, I will write them down. Uh, eyebrows, uh, big eyes, uh, smaller nose, hair kind of goes in this direction. So I'll write them down. Right. Just so, like, I'm familiar with what they are. And then I'll start practicing. Um, and then usually I'll go into, like, a couple thumbnails. You know, figure, the poses can be really hard. Um so I'll do a couple uh, research photos on those. Um, I, I do a lot of photography. Sweet. So I'll take pictures of the poses. Or I'll, I'll just go on, like, Shutterstock and find the reference and be like, and flip the image to how I need it to look. Or I like how that hand was drawn, so uh, I got to take a picture of it in this pose. Um so it's a lot of it's a lot of taking my own photos. It's a lot of like finding my own photos and kind of like building the structure. Sure. And then I can just go for it. You know, so it's just kind of like, okay, let's just dive in, let's see what happens. And usually that turns into about four or five different sketches. Right. And then I usually go from there. I think the hardest thing is catching the likeness. Right. You know, cuz it's either it's like you look at somebody you're like that is Brian or that's definitely not Brian. <laughs> like, sure. So just like I don't know, like, and I don't believe, like, the process is the same for everybody, so... Right. I mean, whatever works for you. I'm kind of, like, a perfectionist on features person, so... Sure. I mean, it looks great. We knew it was us. <laughs> I, I, thank you. I appreciate it. David's actually going to print it out and put it in our office. So. Ah, that's so exciting. I'd love to see a picture when you do. It's it's so good. And people can commission art from you. Yes. How do they do that? How do they do that? Okay, so if you are interested in a commission, you can go to my website, melissathomasart.com. I hope that's the right link. I think it is. Um, and then there is a tab that just says commissions with a giant question mark, and then you go from there. And I cannot recommend it enough because it's Thanks. great. Now, I don't know if Skype is to be believed, but was yesterday your birthday? No. I knew it. <laughs> I knew what, it. What, what did it say? It said, it, I got a notification right when I added you, and it was like, today's your birthday. I was like, I sincerely doubt that, Skype. 
I sincerely well, doubt that. It, it's actually, uh, this is kind of funny, it's the 30th of December. Is it really? It is. Oh man, just got it in time for the year. I was supposed to be born on the 20th, but I guess I was too stubborn. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I have a little more growing to do. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, it was... I'm, I personally, I'm not a fan of when my birthday is, but hey, I, all the Star Wars movies are released around that time, so. Exactly. December 30th is great. It's, 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 that's my gift. That's my Christmas and birthday gift, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't complain. Yeah. Can't. Um, actually, I have, I have a question for you. Okay. Who, if you had to pick. Ooh. <laughs> oh, we're off to a good start. Bear, bear with me. Who is your favorite Star Wars character? qui -Gon. Okay. And now you can't say qui -Gon again, okay? Uh, okay. Who would you be in the Star Wars universe if you if you had to be, like, very realistic with yourself? Wow. Who would you be? That is a very difficult question. Ah. Uh because -huh. I can't say qui -Gon. <laughs> No, you can't. Because, uh, okay. Okay, hold on. Favorite character, and then who would I be in the universe, realistically speaking? Because, realistically speaking, I would try... In real life, I try to be more like Qui-Gon all the time. <laughs> hey, it's a good character to uh, have for a role model. It really is. It's like, a, he's the only Jedi that did it right. That, that is true. Um... That's why that's why I take it like kind of personally when people are like the Jedi got to end. I was like, no, they don't. They just need to go back to what they, they lost their way. <laughs> <laughs> like, Luke, be quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't understand. They're needed. Without the You're Jedi, there can be no balance. Okay, realistically, wow, this is really hard. I've never thought about this before. Realistically, I would be someone. I don't know if I can pin it on an exact person if I can't pick Qui Gon. But I would be someone who actively tries their best to do what's right. And doesn't always succeed, but there's definitely effort always. But I don't know who that would who that would be. I'm, I'm going through like the, the files in my mind and I was like, You sound that sounds like Luke. It does sound like Luke. It sounds like Luke who actively tries their best but doesn't always succeed. Like that really sounds like Luke. I can okay, I can see that. Yeah, I was see Luke in episode Luke in episode six. Yeah. Because he he has a pretty good understanding of who he is and what he needs to do, but he's not afraid to do the right thing. And yeah, so I, okay, okay, we'll go, we'll do that. Okay, that's that's Luke. How about you? I'm turning it on me? you. Okay, I'll. So should I pick a favorite and then? Yes. Okay. Um. See, this has always been challenge. Okay, I'm gonna say Obi Wan. Okay, Obi Wan's the favorite. Yeah, Obi Wan has always been my favorite. That's a good, good, uh, good favorite. Yeah, going back to the, the young Obi Wan Phantom Menace. Days. Oh yeah. Crush. Nothing know? wrong with that. Um, but who would who would I be? Yeah. How do you like it? <laughs> I, I I don't. I I fully regret this decision. That's right. Um, I would probably be similar, like, someone who tries hard, but kind of might take the weight of the world on their shoulders. Sure. And maybe, probably, really afraid to do the right thing. So, like, so like wants to do the right thing, but, like, fears it, you know. Sure. Just because I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, that could be anybody. I mean, like I know there's like hints of Padme in there, hints of Leia, because Leia's afraid, but she's like, she don't care. <laughs> she's like afraid, but she's also kind of like, you know what? Screw this. I I know I can do better. I would say that's probably way more Padme, because really? because Leia's like a more stubborn outwardly Padme. <laughs> she's like she's like her mom, but more like, I don't have time for this. You guys, you flew here in that thing, you know. <laughs> it's kind of Luke and Leia and uh, Anakin and Padme like in reverse. Yes. <laughs> that's that's what's so funny is like Leia's like Padme, uh, Leia's like uh, Luke, uh, Anakin. Wow, that mouth. <laughs> and Luke is a lot like Padme. Yeah. Which is just very interesting. But you know, I don't know. Like, ideally, I would hope to be as cool as Ahsoka. Right. You know, because like she's incredible. She but... is the best. 
She caught Real. a lightsaber with her hands. I always remember that when she fought the seventh sister and just grabbed her lightsaber. Oh my gosh, that fight scene gave me so many chills. It's so good. She's like, I got this. Walks out. So good. Yes. She's like perfectly calm and the Inquisitor, so like we can handle it. She's like, fools, you don't even know. <laughs> For real. God, yeah, so good. She is epic. I absolutely love her. If I if I didn't say Obi Wan, I would have to say Ahsoka would be a close second. That's fair. That's fair. And Ahsoka lives. And Ahsoka lives. I don't care what the heck Dave Filoni said. I've seen his he's, shirt. <laughs> he's such a troll. <laughs> That's he's my favorite thing he's ever done. Is the shirt thing. He is so mean. He walks out, and somebody goes, "Dad, your shirt!" And he's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> Gold. Oh, he is mean. But she lives. Yeah. She definitely lives. She's got to, or something. We'll find out next no. season. Uh, she, she's not the wolf, but she. No, lives. exactly. <laughs> Dave's like, no, guys. Yeah, exactly. No, she's wolf, not wolf. <laughs> wolf, not wolf, owl. Yeah. So good. But on Amazing. that note, I have taken up over an hour of your time, and this has been great. Yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for inviting me on. Absolutely. Uh, where can people find you online? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Melty Arts and my Tumblr of the same name. Sweet. And that's M-E-L-T-Y-A-R-T-Z, I think. And, yeah, talk to me. Hit me up. I will talk Star Wars with you and be a complete dork as I just was in this past hour. Yes. So. And commissions. Don't forget and, commissions. Yes. I, I do like doing commissions. And people should I, get them done because they're great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that a lot. But yeah, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. I had a great time talking to you. Same to you. And